welcome back to the West Ham News Show here on West Ham Unofficial, where I keep you up to date on all of the West Ham news results uh, and all of that stuff. So before we get into it, let's well, let's get into it. Firstly, I, I would like to thank our channel sponsors, SRM Carver and Son. You can find out their link by checking it out in the description down below. Our fantastic channel sponsor here on West Ham Unofficial are SRM Carver and Son. SRM Carver and Son provides uh, crushing, screening and aggregate recycling services across southern England. If you'd like to find out uh, more information uh, on SRM, please click the link in the description down below to check out more information on their website. Thank you very much to SRM Carver and Son for sponsoring West Ham Unofficial and come on your hands. So, if you're watching this right now, yes, make sure you do drop a like on the video, subscribe to West Ham Unofficial if you are new around here. And uh, yeah, so to so on today's edition of the West Ham News Show, we are going to be talking about West Ham at the World Cup qualifiers, what our players have been getting up to. Rio Ferdinand, <laughs> that man, has spoke out uh, about West Ham. The under-23s have been uh, victorious this afternoon and much, much more we are going to be testing discussing here on the West Ham News Show. So let's get on in with it then. Let's not waste any more of your time. And we're going to start with West Ham at the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, let's see what our players have been getting up to in the last week or so when uh, we've all been bored out of our bones, but our uh, but our international players have been out playing and representing their country. So four West Ham United players help their respective nations continue their quest to reach the 2022 FIFA World Cup finals in Qatar on Friday evening. So, so the first round of fixtures and results we're going to be talking about first is uh, firstly Saeed Ben Rama uh, started as um, started as Algeria strengthened their chances of a place at their fifth World Cup with a thumping 6-1 win. Nice, isn't it? Nikola Vlasic also started in a victory as Croatia maintained their place at the top of UEFA, um, at the top of their uh, uh, UEFA qualifying Group H with a win 3 0 over Cyprus, 6 1 and 3 0 for our hammer so far. What about that? Elsewhere, Thomas Suchek capped in the Czech Republic, for whom Alex Crow also started in midfield in a 2 2 home draw with Wales in Group E. That game really wasn't exciting. I watched it and it wasn't very thrilling at all, considering it was a 2 2 draw. Oh man, Lukas Fabianski uh, bid an emotional farewell to, to the to the international scene by keeping a clean sheet in Poland's FIFA World Cup qualifying win over San Marino on Saturday night. Poland, who went on to win 5-0, were 3-0 up uh, at the time when Fabianski left the field to a guard of honour and standing ovation in the 58th minute. Fi the 58th minute occurred... Um, and he was taken off because the reason he was taken off on the 58th minute was because he made 58 appearances for his beloved country, Poland. As you can see him leaving the field, taking his gloves off, uh, quite emotional in tears here as he leaves the field as a Poland player for one last time. And I must say he was given a fantastic standing ovation by the crowd, by the opposition and, of course, by his Poland teammates, which was really nice to see. He's been a real servant to Poland as uh, as their main goalkeeper for quite a while now. The 36... Uh, sorry. The... <laughs> The 36-year-old made his de debut for Poland back in 2006 and travelled to two World Club Cups and three European Championship finals with his country, helping them reach the quarterfinals of Euro 2016 in France. So uh, definitely been a good servant for Poland and I'm sure he will be missed. Nice touch for him to start because he's not currently, well, he wasn't uh, the starting goalkeeper. So, so f for him for him to start was a nice touch and to be taken off in the 58th minute 58 international caps fair play to him uh, he's definitely done a good job between the sticks and very underrated for West Ham and for Poland I'm sure Elsewhere on Saturday night, Andrei Yarmolenko, yes, that man was among the goals as Ukraine boosted their hopes of qualifying for next winter's finals in Qatar with a 2-1 win uh, in Finland. Of course, he had to score Andrei Yarmolenko. It's a flipping good goal as well. For West Ham, he would have booted it straight over the bar for, for Ukraine. He fantastically uh, guides it into the bottom right-hand corner from a floated shot into the back of the net. Great goal, you've got to say, you know. 
He hasn't been fantastic for West Ham in the last few years, but it was a fantastic goal. And finally, England's Declan Rice was an unused substitute as the three Lions racked up a comfortable Group I 5-0 win in Andorra. So that is the first uh, lot of internationals out the way. If you're enjoying it, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And uh, we're talking about Andrei Yarmolenko yet again because he was on the score sheet again for Ukraine. 2-2 two and two as they drew their latest FIFA World Cup qualify against Bosnia and Herzegovina on Tuesday. Night elsewhere, Declan Rice played the 90 minutes as England unimpressingly drew with Hungary, came from behind to get a point at Wembley to keep up our um, our very long streak of not losing in these World Cup qualifying games. Disappointing from England, I must say. I watched it, not our best performance we've had in a while. And finally, the last player I'm going to talk about is Saeed Ben Rama once again. He was an unused substitute in Algeria's 4 0 win. I could have gone into even more about Suchek, Alex Crow, and Pablo Four now as we played a little bit in the National League at uh, Nations League final loss for Spain. But I'm not going to get into that because otherwise this video will be about 35 minutes long. And uh, Let's move on. That man, Rio Ferdinand, has opened his big fat gob again. And uh, West Ham fans are not happy yet again. He's opened his big fat gob talking about West Ham just a month after he uh, he backed West Ham. Uh, West Ham new uh, bidders in Pi Capital. Interesting, from former West Ham star and academy go graduate Rio Ferdinand has yet again risked the wrath. Uh, what's that say? Okay, yet again ri ri risked the wrath. I've no idea why that's wrote there, uh, of the club's fans. Ferdinand upset West Ham fans in the summer when he tagged Declan Rice in a Twitter post urging him um, urging urging his former uh, club Man United to sign the midfield star. Now at it again this time, Ferdinand has overstepped the mark by once again pushing for Declan Rice to leave West Ham. And this is Rio Ferdinand trying to get Declan Rice out of the door of West Ham United, even though if this deal went through, he would have been part and on the and on the wave list at West Ham for a propaganda officer, uh, I like to call it, him and his brother Rio, um, Anton and Rio Ferdinand. Um of course, of course, the newly minted magpies will clearly be splashing the cash in the years to come if reports are to be believed that the Saudi Arabians have got as much money as reported. And Ferdinand suggests that their first port of call should be West Ham star Declan Rice. Well done. Well done, Rio Ferdinand. You've really made yourself look like a fool good and proper there, haven't you? You've said that the tomb should go and buy our best player Declan Rice. We're 120 million on the table when we start talking. Um, and... Just a, just a month ago, if this deal would have went through, you would have been part of West Ham and you would have been te an employee for the club telling the club to sell our best player. God, you really haven't worked that out too well, Rio, have you? You plonker. You absolute plonker. Honestly, got no brain cells. And if if we had any, they're now gone. But uh, I'll get on a rant about that, and I don't want to do that. In other news for West Ham United, Jesse Lingard, uh, that man, Jesse Lingard, lots of reports have gone out about he's going to be... Uh, I saw someone on Twitter say he's going to be available for £15 million in January. I'm not going to be talking about that story. I'm going to be talking about an interview he did today uh, recently where he mentions West Ham and the impact the Hammers had on his life and more specifically Mark Noble. He goes on in this interview to tell a story of how once he got in Noble's car just after he joined uh, the Hammers to travel to the airport to go to an away game. And Jesse got his phone out in Noble's car and he said, no, no, I don't have any cars. Um, I don't have any phones in my car. And... Uh, and Jesse said they had a really nice conversation and uh, West Ham and all the players uh, told him, learned him that not everything in, in, in the world is about social media. It's just these little things. You know, we wouldn't have known about that if he wouldn't have done this interview. Uh, that that story is actually quite funny. And you can imagine Mark Noble doing that, can't you? It's another reason why he was loved at West Ham United. Maybe one day we might see him back in a claret and blue shirt because he definitely looks good in those colours. West Ham's... Uh, uh, although in other news, West Ham's under 23s came from behind twice to get uh, all three points this afternoon uh, against Exeter's under 23s in the Premier League trophy. Exeter under 23 took the lead uh, through a close range finish in the 14th minute. Harrison Ashby, however, equalised from the penalty spot after after good work from Thierry Nevers to win the penalty. Exeter retook the lead uh, on the 69th minute and then our man Harrison Ashby was, uh, was involved in the goal again, where he crossed the ball to Rossa, who nodded at home from close range on the 86th minute to make it 2-2 and level things up. And we thought that would be it. But it wasn't. The second half substitute um, 
uh, for West Ham United placed an accurate, uh, accurate finish uh, across the goalkeeper to complete the turnaround and for West Ham to gain all three points. All through to the next round, I'm not quite sure how this competition works. But we got that winner in the 90th minute. We're five minutes earlier, we were 2-1 down. But five minutes later, we won 3-2. That is West Ham United for you, good and proper. Our under-23s are off the mark in the Premier League Cup after a late turnaround at Rush Green. Fantastic from our under-23s, that is. But the final thing I want to talk about is going to be a new series alert. It's called Out of Contract. Um, it's going to be a series of uploads uh, when I'm away on the, on the holidays, in between the previews that I'm going to put out uh, when I'm on holiday next week. The two previews will be for the Spurs and Man City game, of course, in the Carabao Cup. Uh, there's se currently seven players uh, that are out of contract next summer at West Ham United who will who will either be let go or need a new contract. I'm going to be discussing their former contract history, their time at West Ham, and whether I think those seven players deserve um deserve a new a new contract at West Ham. That series will be in seven parts and it will be out on the channel, you know, what uh once or twice or three times a week whenever there isn't much going on, which isn't uh, in the next few weeks because we've got five games in 19 days for the Hammers, which is going to be bang, bang, bang. So the place to be is here on West Ham Unofficial. If, you'd if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you do drop a like on it, subscribe to West Ham Unofficial if you're new around here. Come on, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this West Ham news show. I've checked a lot of information at you in 11 minutes and 30 seconds, so I hope you found it informative and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys, and come on, you guys.